Hello, and welcome to the HMG Global Viewpoint. I'm Hunter Muller, founder and CEO of HMG Strategy. I'm here with my good friend, Max Chan. Max is the Senior Vice President and CIO of Avnet. Max, great to have you on the Global Viewpoint. Thank you, Hunter. Excited to be here. I'm looking forward to the discussion that we're going to have today. You know, Max, you've had an amazing career uh, and an exceptional career. You're an HMG Global Leadership Institute CIO of the Year, a uh, Hall of Famer. You're, uh, you've been recognized by all sorts of other industry uh, uh, institutions as a, a true thought leader and uh, award winner in our industry. When you think of leadership now, global leadership now, what do you think about most? You know, I think global is a way of business, a way of life these days, right? Um, globalization is, has been going on for a long time, more so than ever today and being a leader without that global acumen um, I find it almost difficult to really navigate especially in the technology industry um, think about it this way I mean Avnet is a, a supply chain organization focusing um, in the in the technology industry right that strategic acumen um, for a CIO um, and for the Avnet leader, is such an important thing because really looking at reshaping the organizations, how do we leverage that global um, um, talent pool that is available to us um, and also the different technology, um, the, the, the logistics network, uh, the, 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 the business migration that we see our customers and supplier partner expect of us to provide of them um, without that appreciation, without that understanding, also without that bridge, uh, it, it's really impossible for us to be able to operate effectively to enable what the business is trying to achieve. Now, it also brings along the, the diverse insights that is necessary um, for us to, to, to understand that there are different ways uh, of doing things, there are different ways of uh, um, um, addressing a, a, a strategic need or a, salute or a problem that the business has and having access to the global talent pool more important than ever now is really um, a time to really have resources around the globe that is able to, to deliver effectively um, to our organizations. Then, you know, with the digital transformation, that global perspective is truly essential um, to, to allow me to do, to, to do my job to, with my team effectively um, for the company and also for the broader um, uh, industry as a whole. Great stuff, Max. A little bit more on Avnet. Set context, global company, uh, size, scale, uh, operations all over the world. You know, we, we operate in hundreds plus different locations uh, around the globe, um, $26 billion company, uh, focusing on the, the technology solutions and supply chain services across the globe, right? Uh, we, we connect the upstream supplier uh, partners that we have, bringing their line card and giving them access to the breadth of customers, um, be it through design, services, um, uh, go to market, um, the overall supply chain solutions, you know, and even serving um, the engineering community, right, um, to, to look at um, um, uh, prototyping as well as the offering com one of the largest engineering community in our industry um, to the constituent that we work with. Interesting. Uh you know, we're in this amazing innovation cycle and we can't go a day without talking about AI and the opportunities for AI in the enterprise. What's your experience so far been with AI and opportunities in the enterprise? Where are you seeing value? Interestingly that, you know, a lot of people are asking me about AI and how we are applying AI, um, more so in the last two years than, than ever before. But if I look, 
look back, we have been applying AI and leveraging AI and ML um, in the last, what, six, seven years um, in, in a big way. It's just because of generative AI, everyone gets so excited and I would say mainstream uh, in the sense that everyone feels that this is the new shiny penny uh, that, that, that we need to be going after. But it's something that we, we, we have a lot of success with because like I said, you know, Avnet is, is, is in the supply chain, um, in the distribution business. We have been in business for 103 years, right? And imagine the, the treasure trove of data that we're sitting on uh, with internal demand signal and supply signal that we collect um, through our transactions uh, with, with, with our, our customers and supplier partner, as well as the external signal um, that we incorporate. AI and, and, and data analytics becomes a, a part of, of, of value that we, we deliver uh, through the organizations. We have been applying that um, either in in, in, in point of sales, in, in, in inventory, in demand forecasting, um, and customer service and everything else. However, generative AI in the last 12, 18 months make it a lot more exciting because all of a sudden now we can apply or help the rest of the company, as well as our customer and supplier partner, better leverage those insights that we have been generating for many, many years. Take, for example, right, with um, the engineering community, what used to be a design services that our customers has to work with our internal engineers um, um, to, to, to develop, let's say, um, a, a board diagram, right? Uh, to design a board diagram. Um, that used to take time for them to, to complete the process. Generative AI sitting on top of um, our, our, our data lake, our product information management systems, um, and also our point of sales data, um, allowing now the customer, instead of having to wait on um, AFNET's engineer to provide them with um, additional recommendations, we are able to now generate designs based on criteria that they, they have or changes that they would like to make based on availability, based on physical size, based on price point, and potentially even to the extent of, um, um, we talked about global er earlier, right? Um, source and, and, and supply, where it's coming from, who, uh, who it's coming from, um, and auto almost immediately generating alternatives for them to be able to make a quicker decisions and hence helping them with a quicker uh, time to market. So one very simple example of how it can be applied across um, our industry. We have a lot more, if we have time, we can talk about that. Great stuff, Max. You know, it's been said every technology, uh, every company is a technology company. Truly, Avna is a technology company delivering technology to uh, your clients around the world. Well, leading and leaning into the C-suite, working with the CEO, the CFO, the COO, and the board is critical for success. Talk to us about your playbook for success. And you've had an amazing run here uh, with you and IT. So I've been with the company close to about 12 years and uh, been the CIO for the last five and a half years, I think, if not more. Um, and um, when, when I was asked to take uh, on the CIO positions, right, um, the first thing that I instituted uh, across the organization is that we do not do IT for IT sake, right? IT is not about um, uh, just the backend support, the backbone of the organizations. Before becoming a CIO, I have the privilege and, 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 and honor to work with every business line president, right? Um, I become 
um, their go-to business relationship uh, person, so to speak, for IT. And that allows me to truly understand what are we trying to achieve from a business standpoint? What are we trying? Uh, what are some of the challenges that the business is facing and the solutions, the technology solutions that we can bring uh, to the business to address that? Um, with that in mind, when I took up um, the CIO position, um, I was very clear to my team that we need to exist for the business, right? Um, and I basically started the mindset change, the transformations of my IT organizations. If you think of IT uh, value chain, right? Um, you, you, you have, let's say, a four four step approach of, of starting with, with operation support um, and the next step being delivery and strategic delivery and then going up to um, 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 taught leadership or, or, or consultative services and last but not the least um, um, bringing innovation to the organization, right? Um, I was very intentional driving that transformations to move my organization from operation support and delivery to more of a strategic delivery and thought leadership and also institute this innovative mindset across the IT organization. Anything that it had on keyboard, uh, operation support, we work with our strategic partner and, and have them do it better, cheaper for us, right? So that, you know, I keep telling my team, the differentiation between us and our partner is that we understand the business. We probably understand the business better than some of the business because IT touches every single part of the business, right? That change really repositioned the IT organization in a completely different light for the organizations. That gets a thumbs up with the BU that ultimately helps um, the stature within the C-suite uh, of FNET, right? Um, so by doing that, we establish ourselves as business leaders um, um, that specializes in technology, that leverages technology and bring technology um, to, to the business to help them achieve what they need to achieve, right? Um, so that is number one for, from, a, from a playbook standpoint. The rest of it is really then embedding IT into the overall business techno um, strategy, the enterprise strategy. So I was very, very cognizant with the fact that I do not want to come up with our own IT strategy. Instead, we become a strategy enabler for the business and look at capabilities that ultimately is delivery, delivering to the business strategy, the enterprise strategy itself. I'm going to take a pause there, but um, I'll probably take the, all, the entire 30 minutes talking about this stuff. Oh, excellent insights. And it's clearly you're passionate about it and you get, you're being recognized by the CEO with additional responsibilities. Talk to us about those additional responsibilities. I say it, um, from a technology um, leadership perspective, right? Um, over the years, we, we have expanded IT to take on digital. I mean, I mean, to some of the audience out there, you might be thinking, thinking that, hey, digital and IT comes together. No, actually, that's not the case. For 15 years prior, right, um, we started a digital organization that is really sitting in the business because um, we, we wanted um, the business to be driving digital business, um, e-commerce, et cetera. But at the point where I would say the organization seeing how IT is really focusing on the business, it makes more sense for us to get the leverage and bring digital, um, the digital organization and IT organization together and put it under my wings. Um, that helps tremendously with my team because now instead of just focusing on the foundational piece uh, of technology to help enable the business, 
we have the opportunity also to drive um, digital products and different things um, that directly um, um, associated to any of the business pillar or the business strategic uh, initiatives, right? Um, so that's one. Um, the second piece um, of the expanded responsibility is taking on um, a PNL relation um, responsibility for for our our digital SI uh, business. Um, we acquired that digital SI about five years ago, um, and it's been sitting in the business. Uh, but back to the the point that Fnet is a technology supply chain, technology solution provider and this in the distribution industry, um, the selling motions of, of, of an SI is very different from the you know, selling motions of a supply chain uh, solutions as well as moving boxes, right? Um, and the CEO asked me to take on that responsibility best decision I have made to, to, to agree um, to that um, and, and really reshaping that organization to be able to provide services, extended services to FNET, a traditional customer and supplier partner, be it you know, helping them to become, uh, um, you know, to be part of Avnet digital extension, for example, right, um, that, that connects that, you know, um, demand signal and the supply signal together uh, and, and be able to leverage uh, AFNET capabilities um, or additional digital services that they need to be successful in their industry and make it easier for them to work with us as well uh, um, as a partner, right? So those are the different things that um, I have the opportunity um, to to be leading um, and, and expanding into um, looking at overall uh, um, enterprise digital strategy. Um, and because of, of that, right, it also gives me the opportunity to, to, to create a, a product-centric digital organizations where we have, we adopt a, a distributed delivery model for digital, where the IT team um, build the foundations and maintain the foundation, the platforms, um, the digital team focusing on innovations um, and, and enterprise level product, but we invite the business unit coming onto our platform that we know is secure, uh, is in compliance, it has all the um, standard um, components and services and governance that they can safely build additional capabilities, digital capabilities that they want to serve their specific customer needs um, or their specific business needs. So that actually has taken shape um, and, and showing great results. People are excited about the fact that, hey, they don't have to wait on the queue on a digital team or IT team to get their their own things, they are able to invest themselves with resources that is able to leverage the generative AI capabilities or just standard um, cloud platform to, to build additional um, uh, applications on top of it. Uh, they, in, in, we like to call it our building blocks uh, of digital uh, across AFNET. Yeah, you know, great update and congratulations on all the progress. In the six years, Max, did you ever think you'd be this far down the road? And how did you develop that business technology vision, the, the roadmap with the business and a, some steering committee and the COO and the CFO and CEO to understand the right priorities? What was most important? If you if you ask me this six, seven years ago, um, no, I am actually I wasn't even um thinking of um taking up the role of a CIO that quickly with um, with them that um, at that point but uh, it was uh, it was definitely a an honor to be um, to be part of um, part of a great company long tenure company 103 years old right great team that I have in IT and digital you know the roadmap getting us to where we are right started um, when the pandemic hit, 
right? When the business is struggling, we recognize um, a increased needs of automations and driving digital transformation across the organizations. But we also recognize the challenges that the business is facing at that time. So what we ended up doing is that we continue to drive reductions in um, operations support, um, a, a, a year on year reductions in operation support so that we can free up funds to do our own skunk work. So, you know, we always like to say that business uh, or shadow IT do skunk work. This is, this is IT doing skunk work. Um, while tongue and cheek about it, the idea behind it is that we need to be able to show small success across the organizations in some of the things that we can do. So we identify an area that we can um, leverage. Um, I don't even remember what specific um, initiative that is in, in the digital realm, but I believe is a, a data platform that's, that serve a particular uh, business needs in coding, right? Um, is a small additional capabilities that help in our quoting environments that provide them instantaneous insight into um, uh, product availabilities as well as pricing, competitiveness, et cetera. And, and, and they are able to, to have access to it at their fingertips. That success breed more success, right? And doing that for a few quarters, suddenly people recognize that, hey, look, there's some great things that is happening there. And they didn't even, the business, the entire company didn't even realize that there is something going on in that space, right? Um, that is how it led to an overall strategic roadmap from a digital standpoint um, that led us to where we are today. And we continue with that innovative mindset today because everything that we do, we start small, we show success with the business, and then we allow the business to come back and tell us, right, the value that they believe they can derive from this solutions or these capabilities. Um, a very recent one is leveraging generative AI. Um, one, our, our vertical market business unit wanted to build um, a knowledge base that they can share across the organizations, right? Um, to allow people to, um, to figure out what can be done from a, from a, um, um, for, for let's say a, a EV um, battery uh, or a, a building of a, of, of, of a drone, right? And, um, and those informations lead them to, okay, here are the different white, white paper, a potential bomb built of materials that allows them um, to, 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 to put this together and present them as a kit to their customer, et cetera, et cetera. So again, continue with that innovative approach continues to be the playbook, but that small success led to the overall enterprise roadmap. And in fact, what we just announced this week to the entire um, senior leadership across the organization during our kickoff meeting for the year um, is that digital now is cutting across the enterprise strategic priorities, the new enterprise strategy that we just rolled out this week. It's great, great update, great progress, Max. How would you uh, say the business characterizes IT now? Are you integral to every aspect of the strategy and the vision and your leadership style? Talk to us a little bit about your leadership style. My CEO like loves to 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 talk about how proud he is um, that you know IT um, is always there and allowing the business to lead the strategy, but IT is there to enable every single digital capabilities necessary for the business. I am very happy with, with the positioning because I, do, I don't feel that we need to lead anything uh, from that standpoint, but we are happy that 
the business recognize that they get to lead it, they get to own um, the the benefit and 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 the the, the returns of of what we can uh, deliver for them to their customers. I'll take it anytime. Great stuff. Hey, Max, this has been an amazing interview. Any final parting comments relative to your career ascent? And uh, who knows what's next? You know, it's, it, if I were to look back in my, what, 30 years of career, the one thing that I felt served me well um, is the, the, is the opportunity that I have had in working in different countries uh, uh, across the globe, right? Um, over that time period, I think I have worked in eight countries. Um, not that many companies, but eight different countries uh, taking up different roles. Uh, in many cases, um, really um, uh, creating new roles uh, that I feel is critical uh, for, for, for the business at that point in time. Right. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up is that, hey, don't don't be afraid of taking up new challenges. I know it's daunting. I know moving to a new, packing up and moving to a new country, taking up a new job uh, is 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 a daunting thought. But I can assure you that breaking through that 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 fear and taking that up. Um, it, is going to be gratifying and looking back like I do today, um, that has helped me tremendously uh, through my career. Second thing is don't stick to um, what we know. Continue to learn and lead. Continue to learn and lead. But before you do that, because of my experience, the diversity that I have had in living and working in multiple countries, I, re I realized that listening first is so important. So, so listen, understand, appreciate the different culture, becoming the connector of the culture, uh, right? Learn from that and really leading um, uh, uh, behind that is, 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 has been serving me well and, and I think will serve you well as well. I love that. Listen, learn, and lead, and lean in. Get global experience. Embrace courage with uh, embrace fear with courage and passion, and ultimately lead and win. Right? Yeah, totally. Great, Max. This is an amazing interview. You're a great friend, a supporter of the HMG Strategy Platform and Network. We've been with you in Phoenix. We've been with you in San Diego. We'll be with you in New York. Love working with you. Love collaborating with you. You've been in one of my books. And uh, again, thank you so much for being part of the HMG Strategy Global Platform, Global Network, and Global Viewpoint here today. Great interview. Thanks for having me, and thanks for allowing me to share my some of my experience. Uh, really uh, enjoy the conversation. Like you said at the beginning, it goes all, it goes very fast. <laughs> and Max, again, uh, congratulations on being an HMG Global Leadership Institute CIO of the Year Hall of Fame. Thank you so much.